Okay, so I've got the contents of my container for cylinder number four. Now, I'm starting with number four, and I'm going to show number four for a specific reason. And the reason is that that particular head um, took the most effort to get the rocker arms moving on when I had the, the compression video. So I've got my piston and all this stuff in here. I'm just going to work on disassembling this head, but all this stuff's going to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. And I'm going to clean each cylinder head's components uh, one at a time. The very small parts are going to go into a little shot glass that I put some LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner in and then just set the shot glass in there so that they're not getting all dispersed. So let's see what kind of... start here with removing this screw. Again, obviously it's not heated up, but it had been run, so I'm hoping that the running would have been enough to get any heating that needed to be done done. Now, you see we've got these little C-clips retaining this. See how these are rotate freely. I'm not going to bother with taking these things apart. I'm just going to leave them as is and clean them like that because there's really just no need in completely disassembling that and potentially losing a clip when I don't have a replacement or damaging one. So there's just no point in doing that. This is where it might have been more intelligent to take the head off first because then I would have had the whole engine to grab onto and use as leverage but did not seem to be a problem Now this will have a head gasket or shim under there. Unless it decides it wants to come out, I'm not going to force it out. Because again, that's one of those things where you do that and you've got the potential for putting a pretty big kink in it and distorting it. So it's my philosophy when I do engines that I really don't disassemble every single part unless it absolutely needs it. And that even goes for carburetors. I don't go and pull every idle needle out and all that kind of crap because I check it and if the carb passes my setup test where it, you know, the high speed needle is fully closed and it doesn't allow air through, then I just let it be. And a carb is something that I can clean after the fact if I find that I'm having running issues. But I don't just automatically go and start doing those things because a I don't always I don't just have parts on hand for cards. I don't just have this supply house of O-rings and small parts and stuff like that. So it makes it pretty you know, impractical for me to disassemble things that I don't know that I know that I don't already have parts for. It's just like this, I'm not going to bother pulling that sleeve out. That sleeve can probably come out if I heated it up and pulled it out, but I don't see the need for doing that. Now, the one thing I am going to mention about this particular engine is, you see that? That's an orientation for one of the push rod covers to go in there, so it does have an orientation, and that needs to be adhered to when you put it back together. But the other three cylinders, this one doesn't look so bad. It's got a little bit of wearing on the paint, so these cylinders sleeves don't look super black like they're brand new well because they're not brand new and I had one time considered whether I was going to just repaint these things but a I'm not a good painter uh, B I would use just some high temp you know manifold paint from an automotive store that's on a spray can and I just spray it on there real quick and be done with it I'm not a painter 
I don't have the patience to do that, and I'm not even sure if it would adhere. So when and it, or if this engine gets sold, it's going to get sold the way it looks. It's going to look like it's a used engine because it's a used engine, and it's not going to look brand new from the factory because it's not. It's going to look like it's had some service. So I'm prefacing all of that with that. So here's some screws coming out. These screws are really grungy. Here's what the bottom of cylinder four's head looks like. See, so here's that gasket. I'm not going to try and pull that out. I could, but I'm not. What I am going to do, and I'm not prepared to do, so I might have to go shut the video off, is I don't have my little wrench to depress this and extract those keepers. But I'm going to do that here real quick. Okay, so I've zoomed in. i got to really try and make sure I stay in the target zone here and not get uh, distracted and move things. So I've got my little closed box-in wrench. Now this one just so happens to be a 15 64th, and that's going to be just enough to let me depress the keeper and do that. And I've got just a yucky piece of paper towel here that maybe that's a little bit too much, I don't know. But I'm going to just stuff underneath here to keep those valves from dropping so I can depress them. And I've got my magnet here, but I need to get, well, yeah, I'm going to go get my stronger magnet. So I've got some of these small rare earth magnets that I put on here because they're much stronger. Okay, so let's see. So in theory, this is what I do. Oops, before I do that, let me get my head eye loop on. Hopefully I don't get my head too close in here, but I do need to be able to see what I'm doing. head wasn't in the way there. So on my magnet came the keeper and the clip. And there's the spring. Now on this engine, I've looked at the parts list. Hey Teddy. This engine, the springs are the same for both exhaust and intake as are the exhaust or the valves. Just looking. And here come the valves. This would appear to be the intake valve. Pretty clean. It'll always be obvious the difference between the intake and exhaust valve because no matter how hard you try to clean it, you will always see staining, carbon staining on the stem of the exhaust valve. No matter how hard you clean it, unless you really just go to polish it, which is no reason to do that, you'll always know the difference. So, there you have it. That's the disassembly of the head. Now all of these parts are gonna go into the ultrasonic cleaner, and I'll show you what they look like when they come out.